Hi everyone, this is Kristen Navarro, and today's topic will be how to reconcile a brokerage statement. What is a brokerage account? A brokerage account is an arrangement between an investor and a licensed brokerage firm that allows the investor to deposit funds with a firm and place investment orders through their brokerage. The investor owns the assets contained in the brokerage account and must usually claim as income any capital gains he or she incurs from the account. I have a sample brokerage account through Charles Schwab here and there are certain parts that are very typical in a brokerage statement so I wanted to go over that with you. The first thing is the account information. Usually you'll see that information at the very top and usually contains the account owners which is over here usually it has an address, the statement period which is usually monthly or sometimes it's quarterly, and the account number, which is usually shown at the very top right. Another section that you'll see is a statement account or summary, similar to this here. This section usually shows how your investment is doing as of the statement date by displaying any unrealized gains and losses, such as this here. In this case, it's called change in value of investments any realized gain and losses, and that's this section over here. In this particular sample, there is no realized gains or losses, but normally it would be shown over here. And then it also summarizes the total value of the stocks, bonds, mutual funds, or any other investments, including cash. So in this particular case, we have a deposit account here, which is a cash account, as well as equities and it has a market value at the end of December 31st, 2016. And then we also have the portfolio detail. So in this case, it starts in this section called investment detail. It lists out all the individual assets in the accounts so that you can determine whether the holdings listed are accurate. It typically shows the value of the investments at the end of the statement period, any cost basis information. So the way it's shown here on this particular statement, you have the market value on top as well as the cost basis at the bottom. So this is where it explains it. And then you also have the unrealized gain or loss, which is shown here. Any estimated income, which is shown here. And other statements show other information such as bond insurance ratings, stock symbols, and any unrealized gains and losses. We also have the income summary, which, let's see, in this case is shown here on page four of the PDF. You have the interest here as well as any cash dividends. And for Charles Schwab, they typically break out any federally tax exempt interest versus any federal taxable income. And then we also have the daily activity, which is shown here. So you have any reinvested shares, any deposits and withdrawals, if there are any management fees, it would typically be shown in here. If there were, are any other payments that are made out of this brokerage account, you would see that here as well. If this account had received any deposits from an outside party, it would also be shown in this section under deposits and withdrawals. Um, you have your dividends and interest here as well. So it gives you the total transaction detail here. And then the very last part are the disclosures, which is usually shown at the very last few pages of a brokerage statement. And it, this section usually includes legal and administrative explanations, such as fee information, penalty warnings, and a description of some symbols used. So now we're gonna move on to how to set up the chart of accounts in your QuickBooks file so that you can accurately track and reconcile your brokerage account. Each investment account should be set up as a separate other asset account on the balance sheet.
A subaccount will be set up for each asset class and under each subaccount or asset class should include a subaccount for the cost as well as the market value. For this particular case, we've set up the Charles Schwab account. As you saw on the statement, it has a cash account and as well as an equities account. But a lot of times you'll see different asset classes such as mutual funds and bond accounts and then sometimes it will have another asset account as well. So. The way we have it set up is we have our cash account here and we have the equity funds and we'll usually break it out by cost as well as market value adjustment. You'll also want to have an unrealized gain and loss account which we typically have as an equity account. So I have that over here. Each investment account should have its own income account for dividends, interest, realized gains and losses and any capital gains distributions and miscellaneous income. This just makes it easier for you to reconcile to your 1099 at the end of the year. In this case, we have your dividend income and then the account, the financial institution, as well as the last four digits. I've only set up one account, but if this client had a Fidelity account, you would also list that under each main account. So a journal entry is typically used to record the brokerage statement activity and the following transactions are standard for each entry. Usually you'll have your interest income and your dividend income, so any investment income including dividends, interest, realized gains and losses, and capital gains distributions. You'll have sales and purchases of the investments, any investment management fees, and there will be transfers from one investment account to another, so you'll see that, as well as any unrealized gains and losses. So in this case, I've already done the journal entry to record the December activity from the brokerage account. So we have the interest income of $5.57. We have the dividend income of 5270 So if I go back to the brokerage statement, that is taken from here, $5.57 and 5270 and then we also have the transfer from this Charles Schwab account to another Charles Schwab account, which is shown here, this amount here. And then we have any unrealized gains and losses. And this is really a plug number to tie out to the ending market value of the statement. Usually you'll want to make sure that it's a reasonable amount. So in this case, the unrealized gains and losses is 39,230.80 and on the brokerage statement it shows the 44,692.12. But if you add this amount here to it, it comes out to the unrealized gains and losses. And then once in a while, you'll have a small discrepancy between the cost basis shown on your statement. So I actually did a small plug so that it ties out. So you have $177.88 to unrealized gains and losses. So once that is entered, you will make sure that everything ties out. So you have your cash of $341,684.13 which ties to this number here, the 341-684-13. And then you have your cost and market value, which ties out to these numbers here. Another thing that I do is make sure that your P&L for December so you have 5,275.85 total. And if you go to the QuickBooks file, you have the 5,270 here and the $5.57 um, interest income. And again, if you have any management fees, it'll typically show, be shown here as well on your P&L. Some other notes that you want to follow is one note that I can always stress is that you should always follow the cash activity. Oftentimes people will plug a number to reconcile a cash which causes them to miss recording receipts and payments or other transfers. And one good place to look at is here. So it gives you all the dividends and interest 
any income reinvested. Here you'll see any management fees or any transfers out of the account. Any capital gains distributions are typically paid at the end of the year, usually in November and December. Management fees are typically paid in January, April, July, and October for the prior quarter. If you have sales of investments, so if you see an amount over here, investments, purchases, and sold, or if you see any sales activity, in this case, we don't have any, but if you happen to see it, you'll likely have realized gains and losses. So you wanna make sure that you record it here. Charles Schwab does not have year-to-date activity, so just make sure that you capture all that information. You'll also wanna reconcile the year-to-date income and expenses to ensure that all income and expenses have been entered. So whenever you do your reconciliations you want to make sure that these numbers tie to your quickbooks file this makes 1099 reconciliation so much easier during tax season so i highly recommend it as i mentioned earlier the statement account and summary will typically provide you with a market value change and that this number usually includes unrealized gains and losses and reinvested income. So make sure that the entry to unrealized gain and losses ties to the market value change per the statement. I just say this because you want to make sure that it's a reasonable amount. For example, you will never see a 1 million unrealized gain and loss in the portfolio with a $4 million value. So just Take a look at this number here and make sure it's a reasonable amount and compare it to what you've entered into QuickBooks as your unrealized gain and loss amount. So in this case, I have the 39,000 to 3080. And if you go back to the statement, the net of these two are about the 39,230. And this concludes my presentation. Thanks so much.